Please welcome to the stage, Allison Powell. Can I get quicker? Hi everyone, I needed a clicker for this, so sorry for the wait. Right now, I'm using an ability that some no longer have, the ability to speak. I'm co-creator of an alternative communication device that will allow people with debilitating diseases, like ALS, communicate with their loved ones. Thank goodness today is not the first time that I've been on this stage. The first time, I was three years old and wearing a bright pink tutu. Today, though, I'm going to talk about how I became the person who started Puffberry. And this journey started four years ago when I left Traverse City Central High School and went to the University of Michigan to study biomedical engineering. I wanted to do this because I was someone who liked working in teams, was interested in science, and thought that this might be a good place for me. But like many people going to their first few years of college, I was nervous, and I had a lot of hard questions that I had to face. Some of these were, am I qualified to be here? Do I belong here? And am I doing the right thing? These questions really infiltrated my thoughts in my first two years of school. These were especially true when I saw the divide between men and women in engineering, and they were especially true when I heard people do the Oh, that makes sense, when they heard I was planning on going to medical school because people understood me being a female doctor better than they understood me being a female engineer. When people look at me, they often do not see me as an engineer. As much as others doubted me as an engineer, I doubted it myself. And during these first two years, I felt that I didn't have the same experiences that were necessary for me to become a good engineer. So I looked for opportunities that I knew I would be good at. I looked for jumps that I knew exactly where I thought I would land. The first time that I jumped without knowing where I would land was when I went to Tanzania to repair hospital equipment through Duke University and Engineering World Health. I worked in a tiny hospital where they would bring us different pieces of equipment to see if we could fix them. One of the first projects was a plastic cube that um, we actually didn't even really know what it was. And the best part was one of the first things we found out was that it had the same birth year as me, so it was 20 years old and it was born in 1993. And when I removed the bottom and I saw this tumble of brittle, melted wires, I thought, who could fix this? Can I fix this? Do I have those skills to be able to do this? And for the next hour, as we're trying to go through different checklists of different things that we could do to repair this, I looked in the back and I saw what looked like a mechanical lever of types. And so I decided, well, who knows, I might as well push it. It could have been a red button or something, but it wasn't. So I pushed it and a eureka moment happened. The top flew open and we found that it was a centrifuge. Throughout the rest of that day, we were able to repair that centrifuge and return it to the hospital in working condition. While I was in Tanzania, there were many successes, but there was a lot of heartache. One thing that really stands out to me is a time where a doctor came up to me from my hospital and asked what is sort of a rhetorical question, but asked, what would you have done in the United States? And this is something that stayed with me because he wasn't actually asking for my medical expertise because I didn't have any. He was asking, could you have saved this person in the United States? And so as I thought when I left Tanzania, I thought to myself, there's two things that I really learned. First, is that I truly am an engineer, and I can find the solutions to the different problems that I see. And the second was that I wanted to take every opportunity to help the people around me and to really find success by being passionate about the world around me. In Tanzania, they don't say goodbye in the same way that we do. They say, nita kukumbuka, which means, I will remember you. And to me, I will always remember my time in Tanzania. When I was back in Traverse City, a good family friend, Dr. M Michael Berry, who many of you might know, battled ALS and lost his battle last summer. At his living wake, I witnessed how he struggled to communicate with his friends and family, and I will never forget that either. So when I went back to school, 
In one of my classes, I had the opportunity to work on a project of my choosing. Dr. Barry immediately came to mind. I told Kyle Bettinger, a fellow teammate and future co-founder of Puffberry, about Dr. Barry, his illness, and his struggle to communicate. I suggested that we try to figure out a different way for him to communicate that would have increased the quality of his life and allowed him to really be able to say his last words to his friends and family. Kyle agreed. But what to do next? Our grade greatly depended on this device actually working, so that was kind of one part of this, is that we were maybe heading towards failure. But we took the plunge. One thing that we did while in class was just fiddle around with a lot of different ways of doing this. But Kyle and I, by the end of this, had a working prototype. And what it does is it uses inhales and exhales, puffs of air, to tell a computer to speak for you. This could be any conversation, like the cherry blossoms in Traverse City, to something like calls for help and assistance. At the end of this class, the rest of the groups packed up their projects, went to winter break, and promptly forgot what they learned in that semester. And I mean, I would have too, other than I could not imagine forgetting about this. We had found a solution, and I didn't want to just leave it in a classroom. This was when Puffberry was truly born because Kyle and I agreed that we would do whatever it took to try to get this to the people who needed it. But we really didn't know how to do that. As a biomedical engineer, this was not the direction that I thought I was going when I went into my education. I thought I would be doing a lot of lab work and then you know, doing some research. I never expected to go down something that might go towards an entrepreneurship idea. But here I was. Over that winter break, I scheduled a couple of meetings with people at the law school, the business school, and the Center for Entrepreneurship. Due to scheduling conflicts, Kyle and I almost missed one of the most essential early meetings of Puffberry. This was at the Center for Entrepreneurship, and it was with the director who suggested that we enter a competition called The Startup. The Startup eliminates every single round, half of the people who are in it until they get to one. At this point, I did not know I was an entrepreneur. I didn't even know if I was interested. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to be a business person. And another important aspect was, could Kyle and I handle this while still in school? Going into the first round, this made us nervous. Were we ready? Were other people more ready than us? Another thing that made me really nervous is that on a big screen like this one, there was a giant timer that would count down the last five seconds. So it was more like you had 55 seconds, not 60, because there was this big pounding noise. And so I was nervous, obviously. And, but we made it through this first round, and we got the mentoring and funding that pointed us in the right direction. About halfway through the competition, was when I found that I wasn't just believing in the solution that we had created, but I was starting to believe in myself and believe in that Kyle and I could make this happen. This was just about the time that we received the TEDx U of M prize for an imaginative idea to put our idea into impactful action. So now, not only did I believe in the solution and believe that we could do it, I found that other people were believing in us as well. What was really interesting that happened next is that at the end of the semester, we were still in the startup competition. We had started not even knowing if we would be entrepreneurs, and now we were. We were ready. But even if I thought I was an entrepreneur, did other people think of me that way? That question was answered when we won the startup competition at the University of Michigan. I was ready in part because of the hard work that Kyle and I had put in, and in part because of the support that we had received. This support came from wonderful family and friends, from professors, directors, colleagues, students, from strangers. I received messages from people telling about their personal story of how ALS impacted them and how it impacted their loved ones. This was incredible. I was in awe and I was humbled by this community. I believed in us. You may be asking, now what? This summer, I will be working on Puffberry and an internship designing for maternal health, a biomedical device for Ethiopia. I still plan on going into medicine, for I want to integrate my biomedical engineering background with what I would learn in medicine. I want to be a practicing physician 
who on an individual level impacts patients, but on a larger level through biomedical design. I want to continue to take every opportunity I have in front of me. Thinking back to the questions that bothered me at the beginning of college, I can still feel them at times. Do I belong? Am I doing the right thing? I've realized that I will always have these questions in my life. But to be on the edge of failure, holding on to a passion was the only way that I found success. I sometimes acted before I truly believed in myself, but I believed in a solution, and this is what led me to the success I have seen. I found how I belonged, regardless of how others thought of me and how I have varied interests from dancing to volunteering to violin to engineering to entrepreneurship to medicine. I am not afraid of some of the questions I once was, for I have found how to jump without knowing where I will land. With a goal and a passion, any of us can make the change we want to see. Thank you. Thank you.